Hello, this is Overseas Customer Success Manager from JC Chance. Today, I'm going to show you how to sign the cooperation agreement between members. There are three parts. Rules for using cooperation agreements. Terms of cooperation agreement. Risk control through cooperation agreement. The first part, rules for using cooperation agreements. The logistics process can be divided into nodes that a piece of goods needs to go through during transportation. You can see that we have displayed a simple logistics chain where each node represents a corresponding work contained, such as warehouses, customs, and destination ports, etc. The next picture we see is about the specific content of the freight forwarder should work during the operation of a shipment. Each of these jobs involves a variety and complexity, such as warehouses, which means handling the stuffing and unstuffing of goods and cargo storage. Customs declaration requires customs clearance and may also require cargo inspection from customs. When the goods arrive at the destination port, the operation may be more complex, involving the verification and payment of destination charges according to trade terms, DDP, BDU, ESW. The above are just the basic operations we have illustrated, but a freight forwarding enterprise not only needs to understand the information of the interested goods, but also clearly explain the operational contact involved in the goods in the precise of cooperation with your partner. Then why do we need to sign cooperation agreements? Accurate and effective. Who I am cooperating with? The scope of business covered by both parties and pre-preparation for seeable issues during the cooperation process. Clear rights and responsibilities. The rights and responsibilities of both parties in our cooperation must be clear to ensure the smooth flow of goods and their safe delivery to the consignees. Followable guidelines. Disputes are unavoidable. Through the rules aligned in the cooperation agreement, we will know how to handle them and enter what procedures when disputes arise during our cooperation. The second part. Terms of Cooperation Agreement Including but not limited to below Company information of both parties Company name Company address GC membership ID Membership validity period Applicable rules for cooperative business Mode of transportation Ocean freight Air freight or other Trade terms, FOB, EXW, DDU, or other. Payment terms or delivery rules. All rules need to be confirmed and accepted by both parties. Details of cooperative interested business. For example, booking, customs clearance, pickup, warehousing, or other. If third parties or agents outside the signing companies are involved in the cooperative process, the responsibility attribution or dispute resolution methods of third parties need to be clarified. Violations, illegal acts, breach of industry operation norms, mismatch between interested goods and actual transported goods, or prohibited import, export items, etc. Suspected smuggling, false reporting, violation of import-export rules of countries or regions, etc. Failure to operate goods according to agreed terms of the agreement or causing additional costs due to errors from one party. Penalties, storage fee, demerit fee, bite freight, or other uncoated cost expenses. Cooperative risk control. Accurate coating and complete cost breakdown. Any changes must be confirmed before proceeding. Be cautious of unusually low rates compared to market standards. Exercise care in cooperating with significantly underpriced offers. 
cooperation between members is advised to include payment before release of documents. If a payment terms agreement is signed, the creditor should take effective measures to control payment risks. Prior to cooperative business, members should verify the identity and the status of their partner's membership. Exercise caution when cooperating with suspended members, or those with membership validity with three months. The following are the terms of the agreement extracted through the platform and freight forwarding enterprises. Party B shall, based on the description of goods provided by Party A in the letter of entrustment, book cargo space with the carrier, provide loading information in writing to Party A, and arrange the authority tasks such as trailer, warehousing, packing, customs declaration, inspection, and a bill of lading insurance. In the event light cargo cannot be loaded and shipped due to reasons not attributed to Party B, such as untimely or inaccurate documents provided by Party A, or when vessel space is full, Party B shall actively assist Party A in coordinating with relevant parties to facilitate cargo loading or arrange for the next available voyage. However, Party B shall not bear any risk or additional costs. Freight and miscellaneous charges shall be collected according to the mutually confirmed rate standards. Payments shall be exacted through payment before release of document method. This means that until Party B receives full payment from Party A and the payment is accredited, Party B has the right to retain all documents belonging to Party A, including but not limited to bill of lading, ocean bill, and the customs declaration refund certificate. Party A shall bear all risk and responsibility during the retention period. Both Party A and Party B agree that if, within 60 days from the date of cargo arrival at the destination port, the consignee does not arrange for delivery or return of the goods, or if Party B cannot contact Party A and its consignee, it shall be deemed that Party A agrees with Party B's abandonment process for handling the goods. The proceeds from the sale of goods will first be used to cover any expenses incurred for the goods. If insufficient, Party A shall bear the remaining amount. Additionally, if Party A's abandonment action causes losses to Party B, including but not limited to Party B's advancing expenses incurred for the goods at the destination port, Party A shall assume compensation liability towards Party B. Any disputes arising from this agreement, including its validity or termination, that cannot be resolved through the above terms, shall be submitted to the China Maritime Arbitration Commission for arbitration. The arbitration award shall be binding on both parties in their respective countries. The third part, race control through cooperation agreement. Member cooperation agreements and freight forwarding agency agreements are designed to safeguard the cooperation risks involved in international freight transportation. They are not only reflect the essence of cooperative engagement, but also establish rules for the responsibilities and obligations of both parties during the cooperation process. JC Trans has consistently provided professional dispute coordination services for platform members. The agreement will play a decisive role in the dispute resolution process. This is because the platform will assess and coordinate disputes based on the terms of the agreement that members signed before cooperation. This approach ensures traceable evidence and a standardized process. The agreement is a commonly used writing document in the freight forwarding market. It serves as a proof of basis for collaboration between freight forwarders. We hope that all members will follow the rules, standardized operations, establish efficient collaboration, provide each other with professional services, and ultimately join hands in the JC Trans family to collectively progress and extend each across the globe. That's all. Thank you for watching.